خلیفہ کے ہم ہیں خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا 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 خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو دس ویک وتھ حضور ارلی دس ویک اے اسپیشل ویڈیو میسج ڈلیورڈ بائی حد خلیفہ مسیح عید اللہ تعالیٰ بن نصر العزیز was played at the International Ministerial Conference of Freedom of Religion or Belief 2022. We are delighted to play the message in full now for our viewers. On Tuesday, 5th of July, a special video message recorded by Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen, may Allah be his helper, was played at the opening plenary session of the International Ministerial Conference on Freedom of Religion or Belief 2022. held at the Queen Elizabeth II Centre in London. The conference was aimed at urging increased global action on freedom of religion and belief and brought together governments, parliamentarians, faith representatives and civil society. The opening session also included messages from His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales and the British Prime Minister amongst other dignitaries and faith leaders. During his message, Hazur outlined the Quranic teachings on freedom of religion and called attention towards the importance of people recognizing their creator in bringing about true lasting peace. Now we have a, another video message this time from his holiness Hazrat Mirza Nasr Ahmed head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya community. Let's hear this holiness message. In the name of Allah the gracious ever merciful. I am very pleased to learn that the International Ministerial Conference on Freedom of Religion or Belief 2022 is commencing today in order to promote and protect the fundamental principles of freedom of religion and belief. As per the theme of this inaugural session, it is certainly the case that freedom of religion and belief are core human rights that must be pro- preserved and protected for everyone and everywhere though we are living in an increasingly secularized world in which people are moving away from religion many millions of people around the world continue to adhere to religious values and it is essential that they are able to live their lives according to their beliefs and convictions thus As the worldwide head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, I sincerely commend and appreciate the fact that you are holding this conference to defend religious freedom globally. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community has itself been the victim of grave religious persecution to the extent that obnoxious laws have been enacted against us preventing our members from professing and practicing their basic religious beliefs over a period of many decades ahmadiyya muslim have been mercilessly targeted only because of their religious beliefs and many have lost their lives as a result of utterly inhuman and barbaric attacks by religious extremists however we have never and will never respond to such hatred and cruelty in a like fashion rather our response will always be one of love and peace based on the teachings of islam we say to the muslims and non muslims alike that all people must always be free to profess and practice their peacefully held religious beliefs indeed allah the almighty has enshrined freedom of belief and freedom of conscience to such an extent that the holy quran states that permission to the use force is only permitted in response to those who seek to eliminate religion from the world in fact the holy quran categorically states that if one does not respond forcefully to those who seek to destroy religion then no church synagogue temple mosque or any 
place of worship where the name of God is recited will remain safe. Hence, the Holy Quran has made it the religious duty of Muslims to protect the rights of people of all faiths and made freedom of belief a cornerstone of our religion. Furthermore, it is the duty of the major powers, governments, and international bodies to use whatever means they have to protect the rights of minorities and to enshrine that all people are able to live freely according to their beliefs. In light of this, I am confident that those nations, leaders, and organizations participating in this auspicious conference will sincerely strive to ensure that irrespective of caste, creed, or color, people in all countries are able to openly profess and practice their beliefs without any fear. At the same time, as a religious person, it is my heartfelt belief that true freedom and lasting peace in the world is not possible until mankind comes to recognize his creator, fulfills his rights, and acts upon his commandments. Whether religiously inclined or not, we must recognize that there is one God who is the creator and in whose hand lies all creation. And so it is our duty to fulfill his rights and that of all mankind. May Allah the Almighty enable for true religious freedom and harmony to prevail and for all communities and people across the world to live their lives freely according to their beliefs. Finally, I offer my best wishes to you all for the rest of this conference and pray that it comes to fulfill its true objectives to protect and preserve the principles of freedom of religion or belief throughout the world. I mean, thank you very much. On Thursday, the 7th of July, two Indonesian guests had the honor of meeting Hazrat Khalifatul Masih V, Ayyadallah Ta'ala bin Asri Al Aziz. Hazu met with Ahmed Taufan Damanik, who is chairman of National Commission on Human Rights, and also with Muhammad Isnur, who is chairman of the Indonesian Legal Aid Foundation. During the meeting, Hazu gave detailed guidance about the teachings of Islam and how Islam is a religion of peace. Hazu emphasized that freedom of religion is a cornerstone of Islam's teachings. Hazu also appreciated the efforts of the two people for working towards establishing the rights of minorities, including the rights of Ahmadi Muslims. We are really honored to, to meet with him and have some message also uh, on how religion can contribute to make a peace in the world. I'm really happy because this is the first time for me to meet with him, uh, to meet with the uh, uh, very nice persons and uh, very peaceful also. I got uh, some uh, very good uh, feeling you know, when uh, we uh, welcome uh, by holiness in his office. And of course, uh, we hope that uh, uh, the condition of uh, Ahmadi uh, Jama'ah Indonesia getting better. Uh, uh, and we ask also uh, pray and bless from uh, holiness to Indonesian uh, uh, nation and Indonesian people. The very strong message from the holiness is uh, Islam is uh, peace. And uh, as a Muslim uh, from every sect, we should uh, uh, fight for the peace, for uh, not only in our country, but in, in the world. That's a, a strong message uh, that we got from uh, Holiness. It's uh, an honor. I'm very happy, very blessing. Can visit uh, here and also met with uh, Holiness, Huzur. Uh, when we are uh, uh, arrived here and we are prayer together, asar together. Uh, Huzur as led uh, asar pray, and we get the jamaah asar with uh, him. It's very very uh, blessing eating moment. Uh, it's uh, not yet before for for me. And after uh, asar pray, uh, the Huzur receive us and uh, meet with us. With uh, Huzur also we discuss about the message of Islam. Huzur 
giving the attention uh, Islam is a peace religion uh, no coercion there no uh, persecution there we now end with a final segment the Friday sermon summary in today's Friday sermon Hazur, may Allah be his helper, continued his series of sermons on Hazrat Abu Bakr, Rezila Tala Anhu. Hazur, may Allah be his helper, mentioned how Hazrat Abu Bakr, Rezila Tala Anhu, forgave certain apostates who had reverted to Islam, and how through this forgiveness, these individuals became a means of support for the Muslims. <laughs> حضور بکر کے متعلق ایک اور سیرت نگار نے لکھا ہے کہ ابو بکر بڑے دور اندیش گہری بصیرت کے مالک اور انجام کار پر نگاہ رکھتے تھے جہاں سختی کی ضرورت ہوتی سختی کرتے جہاں افو اور درگزر کی ضرورت ہوتی افو اور درگزر سے کام لیتے آپ قبائل کے بکھرے ہوئے لوگوں کو اسلام کے پرچم تلے جمع کرنے کے حریص اور شوقین تھے آپ کی حکیمانہ سیاست یہ تھی کہ مخالف زمائے قبائل کو حق کی طرف لوٹ آنے کے بعد درگزر کر دیا جائے جس وقت آپ نے یمن کے مرتد قبائل کو تابع کیا انہیں اسلامی سلطنت کے سطوت و غلبے اور مسلمانوں کی عزت و فتح مندی کی قوت اور ان کی عظیمت کی پیش قدمی کا مشاہدہ کرایا تو قبائل نے اعتراف کر لیا اور اسلامی حکومت کے تابع ہو گئے اور خلیفہ رسول کی اطاعت قبول کر لی ابو بکر نے یہ مناسب سمجھا کہ ان زمائے قبائل کے ساتھ تعلیف کی جائے اور سختی کے بجائے نرمی اور رفق کا برتاؤ کیا جائے چنانچہ ان سے سزائیں اٹھا لیں ان سے نرم گفتگو کی اور قبائل کے اندر ان کے نفوذ و اثر کو اسلام اور مسلمانوں کی بھلائی کے لیے استعمال کیا آپ نے ان کی لغزشوں کو معاف کیا ان کے ساتھ حسن سلوک سے پیش آئے قیس بن عبد یغوس اور عمر بن مادی قرب کے ساتھ یہی برتاؤ کیا یہ دونوں عرب کے بہادروں اور عقلمندوں میں سے تھے ان کو ضائع کرنا وہ بکر کو اچھا نہ لگا آپ نے اس بات کی کوشش کی کہ انہیں اسلام کے لیے خالص کر لیں اور اسلام اور استعداد کے درمیان تردد سے ان کو نکال باہر کریں ابو بکر نے امر بن مادی کرب کو رہا کر دیا پھر اس دن کے بعد امر کبھی مرتد نہ ہوا بلکہ اسلام قبول کیا اور اچھی طرح مسلم بن کر زندگی گزاری اللہ نے اس کی مدد کی اور اس نے اسلامی فتوحات میں اہم کردار ادا کیا کیس بھی اپنے کیے پر نادم ہوا ابو بکر نے اسے بھی معاف کر دیا عرب کے ان دونوں سورماؤں کو معاف کر دینے سے بڑے دور رس اثرات مرتب ہوئے ابو بکر نے اس طرح ان لوگوں کے دلوں کو جوڑا جو ارتداد کے بعد خوف یا لالچ میں اسلام کی طرف واپس ہوئے اور آپ نے اشس بن قیس کو معاف کر دیا اس طرح صدیق رضی اللہ عنہ نے ان کے دلوں کو اسیر کیا اور ان کے دلوں کے مالک بن بیٹھے اور مستقبل میں یہ لوگ اسلام کی نصرت اور مسلمانوں کی قوت کا ذریعہ بنے